Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we're going to study integers. This is an introduction to integers. Now, what are integers? Basically, they are our whole numbers. And here I have a number line. I wrote zero here. So you know that after that will come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All those numbers are integers. But also, when we continue from zero towards the left, these numbers here, this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. These numbers also are integers. Mark on the number line, this number here is negative 2, and some people call it minus 2. So it is right here. This is negative 2. Then negative 7, I will continue counting. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is negative 7 over here. Then, these two numbers are not integers, okay? But we want to practice finding them on the number line 2, negative 1 half. Okay, if you know where 1 half is, the positive 1 half is between 0 and 1. Negative 1 half is between 0 and negative 1, okay? So it is here. Just like positive 1 half would be here. And then negative 2, 1 third, just like positive 2, 1 third is over here, we go first to negative 2, and then 1 third further over here would be negative 2 and 1 third. Which is more, negative 5 or negative 2? Okay, now think of them as debts or money amounts. This would mean that you are $5 in debt. This would mean that you are $2 in debt. Which one is the better situation? Obviously, this one is. The less you are in debt, the better. So this is more, okay? How about two and negative three? Which one is the better money situation? Or which one is more? Okay, two is of course more money than being three dollars in debt. And then how about negative 10 and zero? Is it better to be $10 in debt or not to be in debt and not to have any money? It is, again, zero is more. Basically, on the number line, if you have two numbers on the number line, like negative seven and negative two, whichever number is more to the right is the bigger number. Which integer is two more than negative one? We can use the number line to solve these. If I check first where negative one is, and then I go two more, okay? Negative one right there, go two more that way. And that is 1, right? Okay, you could also call it positive 1 if you want to differentiate. 3 less than negative 2. I'll find my negative 2 and go 3 less. 3 more towards the debt, so to speak. And that is negative 5. 4 more than negative 6. Negative 6 is right here. So I go 4 more. Four more means towards this direction, towards the positives. One, two, three, four more, which is here, negative two. And three less than negative one. Can you tell? Okay, negative one is here, and three less. We go more towards the negatives. It is negative four. Here we're going to look at temperature. As you probably know, in temperature we have a zero point, and below that we have negative numbers, okay? So let's say the temperature is now one degree Celsius. That means that the liquid in your thermometer would be up to this point, one degree, one degree above zero. And then it drops three degrees. If it is here at one and it drops three degrees, it goes down three degrees. And what is this here? That is two degrees below zero, that is negative two negative 2 or minus 2 degrees Celsius. If it is now minus 10 degrees and it rises 2 degrees, right now it is here, minus 10 degrees, it rises, it gets towards the warmer, comes up 2 degrees, then this is negative 8. Or minus 8 degrees. Now it is minus 2 degrees Celsius and rises 4. Minus 2 is here and rising 4 degrees puts it at 2 degrees. 
Find the difference in these two temperatures, minus 2 and minus 8 degrees, okay? Minus 2 here and minus 8 here. The difference is 6 degrees, right? The difference is 6 degrees. And 4 and minus 1. 4 here and minus 1. So there's 4 degrees to 0 and then this one more degrees. So the difference is 5 degrees. Here I have two inequalities, and we are going to plot them on the number line. x is less than negative 2. Okay, first I will find negative 2, which is here. And now x is less than negative 2 means it is anything less than negative 2, any number smaller than negative 2, or any number that is more in debt, more negative. So it is all these numbers towards there. x is greater than negative 4. I'll find a negative 4 first, and anything greater than that, anything that's a better situation or uh, money-wise, so to speak. So it is these numbers here, either less negative or just any positive number here. Now, absolute value is a concept that applies to negative and positive numbers, and it is marked with these two vertical lines around the number. So this, I would read it, the absolute value of negative 5. What it means is, it is the distance from this number to zero. Negative five, of course, is five steps from zero, right? So its absolute value is five. Now, what would be the absolute value of six? Or how far is six from zero? It is six, six steps from zero. How far is zero from zero? Well, it is zero steps from zero. And how far is negative 20 from zero? 20 steps from zero, okay? Notice also here that if I have two numbers that are on opposite sides of zero, like these ones, negative 2 and 2, they have the same absolute value, because they are both at the same distance from zero. And that leads us to the concept of opposite of a number. You see, for negative 2, its opposite number is 2. And for 2, the opposite of 2 is negative 2. These two numbers are each other's opposite numbers, because they are at the same distance from 0, but just from the other, on the other side. Okay. And in mathematics, the symbol for marking the opposite of a number is the minus sign. Okay. So this here, you could read it, oh, it means the number negative 3. Right, but it could also mean the opposite of 3. It also could mean that, okay, go to 3 and get find the opposite of 3, which is negative 3. Now here it makes maybe more sense. Inside the parenthesis we have negative 3, and then this minus sign here will mean opposite of. So I will read this as opposite of negative 3. Negative 3 here, and its opposite over here is 3. So here I can actually write this equals 3. And then this here would be the opposite of 0, okay? The opposite of 0 is, of course, 0. Write an integer for each situation. Mark owes $10. That means, basically, Mark's money situation is negative $10. Or the bank might write that Mark has negative $10. Now he incurs another debt of $10. Now, what is Mark's money situation now? Write it with just using one number, okay? You could say that, oh, he owes $20. That's true. But if we use integers, if we use just a number, his money situation is negative $20, right? Stephanie owes $10. That's like negative 10. Stephanie has negative $10. She earns $10. And now, what's her money situation? Let's use a single integer to describe it. She owes $10. She was in the negatives for $10. She earns $10, so now that balances. She can now pay her debt and have nothing. So now she has zero. And dad has $20 and he buys stuff for $40. Now he cannot actually buy stuff for $40 if he only has 20 But let's say the store owner lets him buy stuff on credit. In other words, owe the store owner some. 
So dad has $20 and he buys stuff that is worth $40. So he uses up all of his $20. But then he will also owe, after that, $20 to the store owner. So now his money situation is negative, $20. A submarine is at the depth of 300 feet. That means if, if here was the surface of the water, a submarine is of course under it, below it, 300 feet below it. And so it's somewhere down there and it rises 100 feet. It comes up 100 feet. So what is its elevation now? Okay, at first its elevation was negative 300 feet. It rose 100 feet. So right now its elevation is just negative 200 feet. Okay. So those were a few situations where we can use integers and there's more. But we're all done now and hope this was helpful.